Judith, thank you so much for having us in this beautiful, charming kitchen of yours. I love it. And we're here on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of Mastering the Art of French Cooking, mm -hmm. which you had a tremendous role in, and we're going to talk today about your life and your role in that book. But before we do anything, I am just so transfixed by the stuff in this kitchen. It's, just, it's so fantastic for me. Who are some of the people that have cooked in this kitchen? Just about everybody. everybody. Going back to James Beard, he was great fun to cook with. He'd just open the refrigerator and say, well, what's in there? And pull this, this, and this, and make a little lunch in about 10 minutes. <laughs> he must have taken up a large part of this he kitchen. Did. He broke a chair once. Oh, dear. <laughs> but uh, also, I, I don't know whether you know the writer Edna Lewis, yes. wonderful Southern writer. Mm -hmm. And she wrote about her part of Virginia, Freetown. And we just became great friends. She, she would often cook up here. And uh, then afterwards, we put on some Betsy Smith records. <laughs> <laughs> it was magical. Oh. Because it's part of, an ex the, of the expression of one's personality. Cooking. The way you cook, yep. the things you're fond of. And the, the miracle of mastering the art of French cooking to me is that it explains so much in terms of techniques, ingredients, what you can substitute, timing, all of that, that once you've learned those techniques, it's like any art form, then you can take off on your own. Mm -hmm. Julia often said, you don't need another cookbook if you've, <laughs> <laughs> if you've really worked with mastery. Well, it wasn't always that way. Before, Julia, you were writing in your book, The Tenth Muse, that uh, when you were growing up in New York, you didn't talk about food at the table. No, no. It was considered very crude and unpolite, is that? Well, I, my family was English background, and need I say more? <laughs> <laughs> and it was good cooking, a wonderful roast beef with Yorkshire pudding on Sunday, but garlic, mm-mm, mm. no, no. I mean, that, that, that was smelly. You know, it's, it's much like Julia, who also came from a state New England family. They were out in California, but same thing, uh, good family cooking, but nothing experimental. Tell us a story about how Julia and Simone and Louise first sent it to Houghton Mifflin, is that correct? And then Houghton Mifflin, and, yep. and they essentially said, cut it in half. That's right. They, uh, they had little advance money from a publisher to do a French cooking for Americans. Mm -hmm. And they realized they needed an American to round out this. Well, Julia took over. And once she got started, she couldn't stop. Because <laughs> she, she realized the most important thing of all, that if you are going to cook with finesse, soigné, as she would say, uh, you have to understand techniques. It was a revelation to me. I knew there'd never been a book like it. I just thought, this is the answer to my prayers, and I don't care that Houghton Mifflin turned it down. This Julia often said to me, Judas? You and I were born at the right time. <laughs> True, but she acted on it uh -huh. and so did I. So. Now, you also were friends with some towering icons as well, namely James Beard. Jim Beard was one of a kind, and in a funny way, he was born a little before his time mm -hmm. because he loved American food, but he also loved to bring in the, some of the Chinese flavor of his, of his childhood. It really was after the war, when the GIs had been in Asia, India, mm -hmm. and of course Europe. Suddenly, it was okay. And that wasn't true of Jim's era. Mm -hmm. I think in your book you wrote that cooking is an expression of love. Yes. And I feel that that's really true. Mm -hmm. I'd want to get rid of this, this uh, idea that cooking is drudgery. I don't have time for it. You get in front of the stove and you begin to have such a good time yeah. and you feel creative and you learn to rely on your sense of taste and smell and you hear the rice crackle when it goes in and what could be more fun? And then you make mm. a nice little plate and I light the candle and pour a glass of wine. To me, it's the best part of the day. It is.